Well, howdy, howdy, folks. Had a good day to you. We got our next project in the line. I picked up this 2012 KX450F from a gentleman who says it will run on spray. In other words, they're washing the rings down with starter fluid or brake clean. Always a great idea. But the key word is it runs. Now, I haven't tried to make it run. In fact, I haven't even kicked the thing. So it could be locked up for all I know. I took the word for it and he seemed pretty legit. So stay tuned. Now I'm trying to plot a course of action on this thing. I'm trying to decide where to start first. Should I start with the diagnostics or should I start with cutting these paint grips off? I think I'll start with the diagnostics. First, let's take a walk around this bike, see what we're working with. Well, overall, the bike's in pretty good shape. He did mention that it was missing a lot of screws from the plastics and he's not lying. Chain's pretty worn out. When you can grab the back of the chain and pull it out that far, you know it's just plumb slap wore out. Back tire's got a few more rides in it. FMF exhaust. Rear brake's about 50% left. We're going to go ahead and throw some rear brakes on it. Looking through the side panel, the air filter looks pretty clean. In fact, it looks like it has no oil in it whatsoever, which is not great. The oil looks over full, and it's never been changed in the life of the bike. More dents in the exhaust. Pink grips. Sweet. One green lever. One bent silver lever. These are not the factory graphics, but I don't hate them. And the plastics are in pretty good shape, so we're probably going to keep those. Front tire's got a few more motos left in it. The front wheel bearings are shot. Which feels good, even though it's drastically over-adjusted. There is no free play whatsoever in there. That's a slipping situation. Fuel smells fresh. We're going to drain that and put some non-ethanol in it. Well, I guess at this point, let's just start tearing this thing apart and doing some diagnostics on it. Always, always, always the wrong bolts. I wonder if they sell like a wrong bolt kit that you can get for these things at a discounted price. Plus, if they don't fit, you just grind them in until they do. Especially if they don't even have threads going all the way up. Like I said, filter's in really good shape. Almost looks brand new. But there's no oil in it. Folks, these things need to have oil. They're ridden in dusty situations. Although they're good filters, they're just not enough to stop the fine fine particulate of dust to get through i like the pj1 foam filter spray basically you take your filter out once you clean it and it's dry you put a light coating on this on the outside of your filter and squeeze it through and you're good to go this will stop all the fine fine stuff from getting through and it also repels water <laughs> Now, I know a lot of you are probably just saying, why don't you just try and kick it and see if it'll start? Well, I'm going to take their word for it that it doesn't start. And even if it does, I want to go through the bike completely to make sure that everything's good on it. So it's a good excuse for me to pull everything apart. Sorry about the droning fan noise. It's July. Now 
that I have access to the back of the throttle body. I'm going to see if I can hear this thing bark at me. We got a little non-ethanol mixed with some two-stroke synthetic two-cycle oil. And we're going to spray this right inside the engine. And I know I've had a few comments saying, hey, buddy, you know that's a four-stroke, right? Yes, I know it's a four-stroke. But two-cycle oil mixes very well with fuel, starter fluids, ether, brake clean. A lot of the stuff that people like to spray in here has no lubricating properties. So what you're doing is just washing your cylinder down and removing all the oil from it essentially causing damage to your engine. So if you can get a little bit of two cycle oil mixed with fuel into your engine, it will lubricate the top end and keep from having that issue. And the two stroke is not gonna hurt your four stroke any way, shape or form. Well, it's not locked up. All right, well, it definitely runs, but will not run on its own without fuel. So we have a fuel issue. We know our spark is good. We know our whole ignition system is good. Obviously, we need to check the fuel pump, see if that's producing pumping action, check the fuel injector. So let's get started. At least with most of the bolts out, it makes for a faster teardown time. Well, the first test I want to do is I want to check to see if I'm getting 12 volts or any kind of voltage to my fuel pump. That's this black connector on the left side of the frame right above the shroud mount bolt. So we've got a red and a black with a yellow stripe. Red's going to be a positive. Black is going to be your negative. Hook your multimeter up. What we're looking for is DC volts. 12 volts or a 20 volt setting, whatever you've got on your DMM. Be very careful not to short these out when we're kicking so we don't have any issues with that. It would probably be easier taking out the spark plug. Not sure if you're seeing that, but I am 100% getting 12 volts to the pump. I guess maybe I misspoke. We 100% have 12 volts to the connector to the fuel pump. I'm not sure if we have 12 volts at the fuel pump. These fuel pumps have an issue with the wires going into them. Now also, this is a no load test. So when you put the load of the fuel pump on it, you may go to zero. It may not produce the power that we need. So we're gonna double check this power with this plugged in. We had a peak of 10 volts, which should be enough to run this pump. Next step, I'm going to jump out the pump and let's hear if she's running. Remember your red's gonna be positive, your black's gonna be negative. Anything that you stick in these connectors, be very careful you don't spread them out. I have very, very thin test probes. We definitely hear our pumps running. She don't sound great, but she's running. Next thing, let me get a fuel pressure test on this thing and see if we're putting out the right amount of fuel pressure. Be careful when taking this off. There could be some pressure in it. All right, we got it connected. Let's see what we get. got a fuel pump that's running that's not producing any pressure if I'm reading my gauge right that's like 4 psi nowhere near what it needs to be we need to be up around 45 with the with this thing leaking fuel with the line disconnected is definitely telling me there's something wrong with this fuel pump let's go ahead and pull it out of the tank and take a look at what we've got in there see if we can see anything that's physically damaged I 
Now your pump is inside of here. It'll go through your fuel pressure regulator, which if it gets anything over 42 PSI, 45 PSI, it will bypass and dump right back into the fuel pump assembly. Anything over that will get fed out and out the tube to your throttle body. So there is a chance that the fuel pressure regulator is bad. Flow wise, the pump pumps fine, but the fuel pressure regulator has probably failed on this thing and it's not building any more than five PSI. This bike will never start on five PSI of fuel pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. A lot of corrosion in there more than likely the use of well I'm not gonna say it y'all know so like I was saying this screen which looks pretty nasty picks up the fuel runs it through the pump comes out of the pump here and it tees will go into your fuel injector and anything over 42 43 psi this regulator will open and dump the fuel out of this tube right back into the unit so that's how that works so i'm going to look around see if i can get a fuel pump or if they sell a kit or something to rebuild these things uh, another thing I noticed where this plastic piece goes down inside the base there's supposed to be an o-ring in here and there really isn't one so that could be where my pressure is bypassing I don't know if somebody had this thing apart or it just failed so I pulled the regulator out I certainly can't blow through it. I basically just take my air nozzle with a rag over it as a little bit of a gasket. I cannot get an accurate pressure measurement on it. The only way to do that would be to regulate your intake air. Make sure this is sealed completely. Turn it up to 40 PSI, 42 PSI. And here if this thing is bypassing. But it seems like it's working okay. What I ended up getting is a fuel pump kit from Quantum. And this thing is just about identical. And I think it, it works on a bunch of different models. Comes with different supports. Different socks. And this is the one we're going to be interested in. That's a tight fit. I guess that's a good thing. So the kit did come with one O-ring, which looks like is going to fit here, which is what I need. The O-ring itself on the pump seems like it's in really good shape, so we'll reuse that. Use a little bit of our dielectric grease. Just to lube up these O-rings, everything slide together nicely. There's some little rubber feet on the bottom here that you have to put back in. Support the pump. The original pump's got positive on the left, negative on the right. We'll just follow that tradition.
Let's put power on this thing and see if she spins up. All right, let me get this mounted back in the tank and we'll do some pressure tests. Most of these pumps will just go one way, so just keep rotating them until all the holes line up. my fuel pressure gauge in and I'm just gonna block off the feed that would go to your fuel injector so we can just bench test this first thing we want to check for are leaks I don't see any leaks around the pump let's go ahead and get some power on this thing all right, now we got our power hooked up. Let's go ahead and see what kind of fuel pressure we're getting. She is holding 43 PSI steady, which means our regulator is working as it should. Everything is sealed inside. I think this fixed our fuel pump issue. And it's holding a little bit of pressure where before it would drop right off to zero. So, all good news. Now I got this tank stabbed back on here. Let's give this thing a few kicks and see what we come up with for fuel pressure. So she's definitely... certainly looks like we found our problem well for the last few projects I was a little overzealous putting them all together and just expecting them to start however in this case I probably would have been okay to put it together well that's terrific news I'm gonna say that it's probably going to be that o-ring somebody probably took this apart and that o-ring got lost they put it back together so it will flow fuel but as soon as you try to put any kind of pressure on it, it will just bypass the O-ring. So that's good news. I think I want to say I paid 60 bucks for this pump kit. So totally worth it. Supposed to be a pretty good name brand as far as aftermarket pumps go. But, you know, that's soon yet to be seen. So let's go ahead and get this thing together and get the rest of our maintenance done. As you can see, I already put a new front tire on it. Looks pretty killer. As you can see, the chain doesn't have the slop, like a worn out chain. We got this filtered out and cleaned up. It wasn't bad, it just didn't have any oil in it. You can use a cleaner like this, put in a five gallon bucket, and uh, it's good you throw a lid on it, and you can clean a bunch of filters with it before you get rid of it. Then after it's all clean, and you rinse it off real good, let it dry, gonna add our oil to it. Like I said, I like using PJ1, but there are a bunch of different brands out there. It's a red color so you can see that it's got a coating on it and where you've missed. Then what I'll do is just kind of squeeze it in. I 
and that's it. It's not going to restrict any airflow, and it's going to catch all the fine particles of dirt. Like I said, it also repels water, so if you get any water in through here, riding through puddles or anything, and water hits the filter, it'll help to run it off rather than suck it in through the motor. Some of the most critical and easy maintenance things to do is clean and oil your air filter regularly. Regularly. Especially if you're riding in really, really dusty environments. You know, change your oil and filter on a regular basis. Like I said, I use Shell Rotella T4. It's like 16 bucks for a gallon, which is like super cheap. And then the filters are $2.50, $3 or something like that. So it really just doesn't make any sense to not just be on top of your oil changes. Adjust and lube your chain. Um, of course, you got valve adjustments and stuff like that. But if you ride like I do, where you're not bouncing this thing off the rev limiter constantly, I mean, I can go, <laughs> I can go a long time without adjusting valves. In fact, my 07, I think I had for six years. I never did anything to it as far as that's concerned. Still always just ran great, started and ran beautiful. But I'm more of a easy going. I got no problem with grabbing a handful. So I love the feeling of a 450 when she wakes up. But I rarely ever hit the rev limiter. So these bikes are super reliable if you just take care of them. After all is said and done, this one didn't turn out to be too bad. It ended up being a fuel pump issue, whether it was the pump itself or the O-ring, blah, blah, blah. It's fixed and it was fairly inexpensive to do. We did go, go ahead and do a bunch of maintenance to it, including levers, grips, brakes, chain, chain guide, air filter, service, oil service, drain and clean the tank, new front tire, etc. So this bike should be good, ready to run. As always, I want to thank all of you for all your support, all your kind words. It means a lot to me. I would certainly appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel. It really helps it grow. Likes, comments, all help get the word out there on this channel. So, again, thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate you, and we'll see you on the next one.